So about, I would say, five years ago, I visited a church with my sister. She took me there, and we just wanted to check this woman out because she used to be a member at my mother's church. So we just wanted to basically, you know, support. And when we walked up in there, she's a prophetess. And um, I just knew. I felt something in my spirit, and I was like, she has a word for me. And the whole time we was there, I'm like, if she doesn't share that word, if she doesn't recognize me in the spirit, because I always knew there was something special in me. We all have something special in us, but you have to know it because when you know it, that's when it's really activated. That's when it goes into full force. I knew there was something special in me, even though I had not been in ministry. I hadn't started my ministry yet. And I was telling myself, I'm like, if that woman doesn't speak to me and recognize me in the spirit, then she might be a false prophet. Yes, I, yeah, a false prophet. Because spirit recognized spirit, okay? And I just knew, I'm like, if she's a real prophet, prophetess, she has a word for me. She has something to tell me. And if I walk out of here and she don't speak to me, then she's questionable. You, look, when you have power, you can know these things. I'm telling you, you guys, there's so much anointing and power that we have that people don't even have, that y'all don't know that we actually have access to. But the more you spend time in God, you'll know. She called my sister forward. She spoke for my sister for a long time. And then my sister was like, okay, you know, um, Deb, I'm ready to go. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, she spoke to my sister. That's cool. But she didn't speak to me. And I'm like, okay, I, she's questionable. I don't, I know I won't, I won't come here again. <laughs> but anyway, we literally picked up our purse, our purses and was heading for the door. Okay. And I'm like, wow, she did not speak to me. And then she on the mic, she was like, wait, wait. She was like. Her, come, come. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, mm-hmm. She a real prophetess. She a real prophetess. I knew it. I knew it. So she called me forward and she was like, she was like, you, I think she called me little girl at the time. <laughs> she was like, you little girl. She was like, she said, you are special. You are very gifted. You are very gifted little girl. And I'm looking like, okay. And she was like, she said, I shouldn't be praying for you. You should be praying for me. In my mind, I'm like, what? This woman literally took my hands where I'm over here like this, receiving her prophetic word like this, ready for her to lay her hands on me. No, she was like, you need to lay your hands on me. In my mind, I'm like, what? Are, is she serious? Me? And she was like, lay your hands on my head. I laid my hands on this woman's head. I don't know what she felt like she received, what the Lord told her to, I don't know. All I know is I laid my hands on her head. I, I listened and she was like, why are you not in ministry yet? And I just looked at her with a dumb face. And the truth was is that God did not give me no direction. He had not yet given me the green light. He didn't tell me nothing to do. So I was just out here, just going to church, doing whatever, you know, and just waiting. And yeah, so that was a very powerful moment for me. And I felt it, I received it because I always felt like there was something special in me. Another thing is that after all this heavy training that I've been going through with the Holy Spirit, one way that I know that he, the, the Holy Spirit has accomplished everything he wanted to accomplish in me is that one night I was sleeping and I believe it was early mornings, maybe five o'clock in the morning. The sun was, dim, you know, just coming in a little bit. And I'm like, I'm barely asleep, but asleep. I'm for, I was up, but then I was falling back asleep. And clearly, so clearly, I heard a loud voice right here in this ear. I'm laying like this on my belly like, okay, I'm going to go back to sleep. And I hear this loud voice that says, I know who you are. And I open my eyes. And I'm like, okay, that was the devil. We know in the Bible, it clearly says in Acts 19 verse 15 that Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? When the devil know who you are, you are officially a threat to his kingdom. You are full of power. He is now afraid of you. And also what that means is he going to keep coming for you. And I've had a, a lot of attacks from the enemy for the month of December. A lot of attacks, a lot of dreams. I literally have been getting up every morning, rebuking and casting out. I'm tired. Now I'm just tired. I'm like, okay, devil, you keep coming. I'm gonna keep coming. You know what I'm saying? So, because I don't like to be caught off guard. 
So we have to be on the defensive as well as the offensive. Beauty, brains, and Bible. Beauty, brains, and Bible. Beauty, brains, and Bible. Bible. Welcome to my channel. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Beauty, Brains, and Bible. So you guys, on this video, I want to share with you guys my calling, my purpose, and the assignment that God has given me, okay? I'm really, really excited because he gave me this assignment like 10 years ago, but the devil has oppressed the mess out of my life. But thank you, Jesus. I finally have victory. So now I am moving forward by fire as fast as I can to get as much as I can done. So anyway, um, my calling is a spiritual advisor, a, you know, to spiritually guide those that God personally sends to me. I've been doing this for a little while now, but more, you know, one-on-one -on -one personally. It's nothing that I've advertised or put out there because it just wasn't God's timing. He hadn't yet given me the green light. But now it's the new year and you know what? He's like, go ahead, Debbie, go for it. Do your thing. I got your bag. I'm like, okay, God, let's do this. So when God gives us gifts, obviously they're not just for ourselves. They're to share it with others because our gifts are very, very much needed in the body of Christ. So through my spiritual journey, I finally gotten... Um, serious breakthrough and I'm super excited so if I'm always like energetic it's because I'm happy I'm free I'm delivered <laughs> so I'm always like so bubbly because when you're hindered and in so much bondage you think you're free and you're happy no wait until you get some serious deliverance in your life them thousands of demons are finally gone and you don't have the, the same burdens and the, the same strongholds you don't have the same obstacles you're gonna be like hey i ain't bothered never bothered i ain't bothered never bothered <laughs> like what used to upset me just doesn't upset me anymore and i'm so happy about that all right so part of my spiritual journey my calling um, i would say anyone's ministry is warfaring okay so warfaring is part of my daily breakfast okay i normally like to warfare in the midnight hour that is the best time to warfare but the thing is depending upon the dreams that i have the night before if the devil came for me i gotta come for him by the time i wake up so normally in the morning um, I'm casting, I'm rebuking, I am commanding my day, commanding the morning. I'm setting the pace for my day. As a soldier of Christ, we must, we must get up, gear up every morning and go into battle. Okay. Even if we're not battling the devil, we have to stand on our post all the time. Okay. You got to be ready because you just never know because the devil likes to sucker punch us. And, you know, I like being sucker punched. You know what I'm saying? I like to, you know, face-to-face -face confrontations. You got a problem with me? Let's go ahead and, and, and dupe this out at midnight. I'll see you at midnight. Okay? At midnight. Meet me at midnight in the spiritual realms. Okay? That's where I'll be at. Okay? So, I just finished a series of trainings with the Holy Spirit. I mean... He trains me nonstop, okay? So right now I'm done with my training. I just did, uh, like I would say, it's supposed to have been 30 days, but I started before then. But I just finished training with the Holy Spirit and no TV, no radio, no hanging out. I mean, it's always intense, intense training. So definitely whoever God has assigned you, to be, you know, your ministry leader, your apostle, your evangelist, your teacher, your preacher. It's always good to know that that pastor spends time in training and quiet time with the Lord often. If your pastor is, or uh, evangelist is constantly all over the place preaching and doing all this stuff, mostly to get money, when do they have time to get their spiritual food and really strengthen themselves and get re-energized and get their battery recharged? So it's a regular thing with the Holy Spirit for us to be set apart often and go get our spiritual food because he puts it aside for us and we got to go eat it. 
Okay, that's the only way that we're going to have the energy to give to the people, to um, evangelize, to preach, to teach, to, you know, be an apostle, to prophesy to the people. We have to go to the source regularly. After intense training, I would say that I've been in intense training with the Holy Spirit. Um, definitely for sure like three years three years on and off but within this last year i would say the last two years it's been like hardcore training okay and basically i feel like i've graduated i feel like i went through a series of training that he has approved and said hey deb you passed you get your merit you are now one of my soldiers you don't just wake up and become a soldier of the lord you got to go through boot camp you got to go through some serious training you got to just let the world go and go into the military of the lord and become what he needs you to be in order to fight those battles because there's a thing called the front line and i'm trying to be on the front line okay i'm not trying to be like y'all go ahead and get the devil let me know y'all done no i want to be the one to get the devil okay and i'll let y'all know when i'm done okay so on the front line you have to be geared up armored with the full armor of god at all times you know what i'm saying you can't say no to God. You can't be unprepared. You have to be ready. You have to be fully engaged. You got to be participate in the things of God, cooperate in the things of God at all times. You got to know what's going on. You can't be oblivious because the devil will shoot you down. Okay. He's very powerful. We have more power, but if you don't know it, <laughs> you have no use. If you don't know you have power, you are, you are of absolutely, you're of no use to the kingdom. You have to know your power. You have to know your authority, okay? You have to exercise your spiritual gifts in order to, you know, grow your spiritual muscles, okay? We need spiritual muscles. You can't be a little baby on the front line. You gonna, they're going to shoot you down. And, and, and the angel's going to have to be like, let's go get them again. They done fell again. <laughs> so with my ministry, in order for me to be successful and to receive all that God has for me, because I'm combating demons, because... I'm exposing the devil's kingdom every chance that I get. That's what the Lord specifically told me. So if you're going to come for the devil, trust me, he's going to come for you. And it's no joke, you guys. Um, so I literally pray a minimum of three times a day. And if I don't make it three times a day, chances are I'm in the word. You know, reading the word, um, learning um, the things of God all day every day it is my passion it's what i love to do it's what i was born to do and my entire family is in ministry we all chase the lord and it's just amazing amazing so i'm i'm really blessed to have been born in a family of god chasers god lovers you know god pleasers you know so that has definitely helped me a lot um so i thank the lord for that so i do spend a lot of my time in holy ghost university okay he enrolled me and i go to all my classes <laughs> i show up to every class you know and if you don't show up for class then that means you are just behind schedule it's going to take you longer to complete your process so i make sure I, I show up for all classes and you know that i participate and i raise my hand and i answer questions you know and i ask questions as well so you know holy spirit is a spirit of truth he tells you all things he's all-knowing so he will tell you everything you need to know so i feel like you know i'm at a good place spiritually so this journey has not been easy it has been extremely beneficial now with the five-fold ministry, you have your apostle, you have your teacher, you have your preacher, you have your evangelist, and you have your prophetess. Uh, spiritual advising, I would say that falls more so in prophetess, okay? But with my um, advising, I just more so do one-on-one. -on -one. So it's pretty intense, and my goal is to you know, lead you to Christ, let help you to know the things of Christ, how to maneuver and operate in the spirit. So basically I do a, you know, one-on-one -on -one session. I work with that person long enough to know that they're good. So it's not like it's a long-term thing, but it's like, I just help you to get to a place where you feel safe, where you feel like you're good with the Lord, where your relationship with the Lord has gotten stronger and you can hear from the Holy Spirit and 
go out there and you preach the gospel and share everything you learn and pray for people. So it's not to babysit anyone, but it's help is to basically strengthen you and, and teach you a lot of the things of God and to support you, to encourage you. And so that way you can bless and help those that are around you. Okay. So when a lot of people are in church, we were not called to be pew members. We were called to, you know, go out there and commission the gospel, share the gospel, preach the gospel with everyone to help people. But with church these days, it has definitely crippled so many of God's people. There's so many people there sitting there with gifts that's being unused. And when you get to heaven and God was like, well, what happened to the 10 gifts I gave you? You can't be like, well, I was sitting in church, Lord, and I was listening to the word and you know, the pastor didn't really, you know, tell me to, you know, to do anything. The church didn't have, you know, no room for me to do anything. That's not an excuse for God. You cannot have any excuse because some churches are so big that it's like there's really no room for people to do anything. And in the churches that's too small, there's really no room for anyone to do anything. So that's why we are supposed to have our own individual ministry. So as I'm going out with mine, whatever yours is, because we all have one. Go out with yours and share it. Don't just wait for church because God is not stuck in brick and mortar. There's people everywhere that needs your gifts, okay? Now, my entire ministry is centered around the Holy Spirit. I only move, operate according to the Spirit. I don't eat or breathe unless it's in the Spirit. Okay, I'm going too far. <laughs> But literally, I move according to the spirit. I live in the spirit because she is trying to be a spiritual beast up in this place, okay? Because for all the things the devil put me through and kept me from and got me behind schedule, um, I'm mad at him. I'm mad at the devil. And when you're mad at the devil, you want to shut down his kingdom every chance you get. So I have an enemy. I have a target that I need to take out. And I have to stay focused. And the best way to, you know, have all kinds of spiritual ammunition is to live in the spirit according to the Holy Spirit. So everything that I speak of is Holy Spirit. Everything that I share with my ministry is God-centered and it's all going to come from the word. Okay, that's it. If it's not in the word, it ain't coming from me. And if I say something mistakenly, you know, then please correct me and I will do my research and I will correct myself. I have no problem with that because we are all learning the things of God and there is so much to learn. So the five things that I'll list that I do within my ministry, spiritual advising, my five major targets, and there's plenty more, but this is my five major targets, is my job is to activate you for Christ, okay? Um, help you become one of his soldiers, Teach you how to live in the spirit, which is how we obtain, like I said, our superpowers, okay? Live in the spirit is just the best place to be. It's the safest place to be. Also, I want to help you discover your purpose or help keep you on track to your destiny, okay? Because that's what we're here for. We're here to complete our assignment, fulfill our missions, and bring our butts back home, okay? Go home to Jesus. We don't have any more time to waste. These are the end times, so we have to be constantly prepared, sober, and vigilant. The last thing that I do is help you fan into flames your spiritual gifts. You cannot sleep on your spiritual gifts. You cannot just not activate it and use it, learn it. So when you have spiritual gifts, it's one thing to have them and to know it's there, but you have to exercise it. You And a lot of it is from trials and trial and error. You have to just try it out. It's like when God spoke of the three guys with the talents, the one lazy one never used his talents. He never used his gifts and God took the little bit that he had and gave it to someone else, okay? And our gifts are supposed to make room for us, room for our success. It's our spiritual gifts and, you know, our talents is what's going to really bless us and progress us in life, okay? That's where we get the most out of life, okay? That's where God can make the best use of us is if we exercise and use our spiritual gifts. So those are the five things that I really want to target one-on-one -on -one. Um, because it is our job to be effective, fruitful, and productive Christians. We don't have time to be passive, lazy Christians that just, you know, want everybody to pray for us. Pray for me. You one of them people where you pray for me. You know you can pray for yourself too. You know God going to probably hear you before he hears me because it's coming from you. 
Okay, so I'll intercede for people, but it's like, you got to pray for yourself. You got to fight for yourself. You got to want this more than I want it for you. And me being so passionate that as I am, sometimes it's like, I'm ready for you to get everything that God has for you. And then some people is like, yeah. And it's like, do you want this or not? So I'm here to help you with relationships, marriages, family, career, okay? Also with important decisions because a lot of the decisions that we make is why we are in trouble now, okay? So we have to learn to make better decisions to have better judgment and that is extremely important in order to walk successful in this life so we gotta fight for what we want the blessings are there but i think a lot of people think that it's just going to fall down no the, the the bigger blessings are the ones the enemy is really holding up he's holding up so much of our blessings and everyone is in spiritual slumber and they're not getting their benefits they're not getting all that god has for them and the kingdom suffers violence okay and the violent take it by force okay I've been in warfare so many times and I'm like, I'm pulling down my blessings. I'm taking it back by power and by force. Devil, give me what you stole from me. And what the devil has stolen, he's supposed to give it back seven times. Because in the Bible, it says the thief comes and he steals and he must return it seven times. And devil, give me back everything you took from me seven times over. Like, I, y'all, I don't be playing. I really don't be playing. I've been through too much. I've been through too much. And I want everything that belongs to me. And I'm taking it. When I get to heaven, I want the Lord to be like, you took, you got all your blessings. I'm like, yup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm here for those that are chosen and truly have a desire um, for God. Those who want nothing more than to be in his will. I'm looking for the chosen ones, the soldiers, okay? Those that want to be on the front line, okay? Um, because I need those that are truly, truly after God's heart just like King David, because if not, if you don't really want God, then my ministry is not for you because unfortunately, I don't sugarcoat, I don't babysit, I am you know, I have holy aggression, I do. My family be like, tone it down a little bit. Tone it down a little bit, do you know that there's a real hell that's trying to kill us and take our lives? I'm not trying to tone down nothing, okay? Like, I'm like, mm, in your face. Okay, but guess what? You're going to be delivered. You're going to hate me on earth, but you're going to love me in heaven. And that's okay with me. You ain't got to like me right now, but you're going to love me when we both in heaven. You're going to be like, thanks, Debbie. And I'm going to be like, I had you, girl. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So I only want serious people only. Those that are ready to give God full surrender, okay? Or at least are ready to go through the process. I know for some people it's baby steps. But you have to understand there's levels. You cannot stay at the same level. There's people that's been in church 20, 30, 10 years, and they're still on spiritual milk. They're at the same level. You are not being effective. You are not an effective, productive, fruitful Christian. You out here just sitting here getting the word and you going home and you ain't sharing nothing. Okay, so you ain't doing nothing. And that's now not how God wants you to be. He needs you to be effective. So I just want to warn people. I feel like I have to give a discretion about me, even though like I love humor. I love having a good time. But when it comes to be when it comes time for us to be serious, I ain't about these games, you guys, because Satan is not playing with us. It's OK to laugh and have fun in the Lord because he has a great personality, a perfect character. But when it comes time to be about business, I'm about that business. So my just. My discretion about me is I have holy aggression, okay? Um, I have extreme passion. So people that are passionate, we are like, Rah! So if you are a very, very sensitive, soft, calm person, I'm pretty sure God has assigned someone else to you. So go find that person. It is not me, okay? It's not me because I'm in your face type of ministry. My ministry is like in your face, okay? Because we, it's a war, it's a battle out here and we ain't got time to play around and babysit and, and brush your hair and, and pat your back. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing it. If anything, I'm kicking you <laughs> in order to help you gain all your, your blessings. Okay. I need you to be successful and get everything that God has for you. And I'm not going to achieve that by just, you know, giving you what's 
the good by giving you only what's good. I got to give you the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. I got to give it to you, okay? Because we got to make it on home. And that, like I said, um, I don't sugarcoat and I don't babysit. I have a very unrelenting spirit. I go hard. I go hard. I'm a die hard for the Lord, for the Lord, and I'm looking for die hearts, okay? I have a mentality that says God over everything. That is my mentality. God over everything. And that's it. There's no in between. There's no before. There's no after. God over everything. Point blank, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, period. There's absolutely no way for us to beat the devil if he's not afraid of us, if he doesn't know who you are, um, if you don't know his strategies, his schemes, his tricks, you know, what he does to overtake us. If you don't know anything of the enemy, I'm telling you, he's beating you up left and right. In the spirit realm, you're probably probably all black and blue. So we have to know what the devil is up to before he even accomplishes his, his own assignment, before he sends his little imps, his footmen, to come and get us with a spirit of fear. Okay. So for those who are interested and in need of spiritual guidance, spiritual help, you can email me. I will leave my email in the description box. And basically, um, do I charge? No, I do not. Okay, because the Bible says freely you receive, freely you give. All right, so I'm not in the business of pimping God's work or our, or our gifts. That is not what he tells us to do. We're supposed to just give um, freely. And that's what I do. Um, of course, if you want to sow into the ministry, if you want to give offerings, please do so because it's highly appreciated because this is what I do full time. Okay. So I thank you so much, you guys, for, you know, helping, supporting uh, my ministry. Uh, I'm just now getting it started. And this is the beginning of a huge journey. I just can't wait when I'm on my deathbed and I'm like, Jesus, it is finished. I've completed your assignment. God, it is done. Just like Jesus said to God, it is finished. It is finished. I did everything you commissioned me to do. You sent me here with a, a purpose for a reason, and I did that. And I can't wait for that moment. And that's my entire goal in life is to be on my deathbed. You know, not die from sickness because the devil is a liar. I'm going to die of old age, still strong, still beautiful. I'm going to die of natural causes. <laughs> I refuse to let the devil take me out with cancer, diabetes, nothing. Okay, it's going to be natural causes and I'm going to be on my, my deathbed still praising Jesus. And I'm going to be asking the nurses, are you saved? Do you know Jesus? Have you accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Okay, Jesus, I got you one last more. Okay, you could, I, you could take me now. <laughs> I'm working till I die. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for watching another episode of Beauty, Brains, and Bible. I love you. Make sure you read your Bible, rebuke the devil, and eat your veggies. Love you. Have a great day. Beauty, Brains, and Bible, 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 Beauty, Brains, and Bible, 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 Beauty, Brains, and Bible.